All right, before we get started with Lewis diagrams, just a couple quick definitions. So a molecule, it's got to be two or more nonmetals bonded together to form a compound. So ionic compounds are not considered molecules because they're just electrostatically attached to each other. And the bonds between atoms are nonpolar covalent or polar covalent. doesn't really matter so long as they're not ionic. Polyatomic ions, they're a little bit trickier. Polyatomic ion, it has a charge, but it is uh, covalently bonded molecules. So, for example, PO4, 3 minus, which is phosphate. All right, it's got the charge on it, but these, the phosph uh, phosphorus and the four oxygens, those are covalently bonded together. So polyatomic ion itself, this guy right here, is a covalent compound. When you join it with something else, you know, so this was sodium phosphate, and it would be in a 3 PO4, that as an entirety would be an ionic compound, but just this section right here would be covalently bonded. Okay, so Lewis structure, we only use these for covalent compounds, so molecules. Can't really use them for ionic structures, that's where we do the whole circles, uh, looking at the radius thing. What they do is they provide for us a visual representation, and what that's going to help us do then is if we can draw Lewis structures, then doing the VSEPR, predicting the geometry of these molecules, is going to be a lot easier. So this is kind of step one. If you can draw Lewis structures, then you can figure out the three-dimensional shapes. Okay, so we're going to go through the steps in drawing a Lewis structure. Uh, you get lots of practice with this, and please practice this several times just so you get the hang of it. Looking at the steps maybe to begin with, but hopefully after a little bit of practice, you'll be able to do this without even looking at the steps. It'll come to you naturally. So the first one that we're going to look at is phosphorus trichloride. So P... CL3. And step number one is to t count the total number of valence electrons within the molecule. So you look at your periodic table. The column number that it's in is the one that tells us how many valence electrons it has. So phosphorus, for example, is in period, uh, or uh, sorry, group number five, and so it has five valence electrons. Chlorine is in group number seven, and so it has seven, and there's three uh, chlorines, so that means you multiply that by three. So it would be 21 plus 5. So we have a total of 26 valence electrons. So that's what we have to work with. Remember, all bonding happens because of valence electrons and valence electrons only. Core electrons do not bond. So what that means is our Lewis structure is just going to be dealing with those 26 guys. So remember that number. At the end, we should have 26 valence electrons represented in our molecule. All right, step number two, we need to lay out our skeleton structure. And to do that, we need to figure out who goes in the middle. The rule of thumb is the least electronegative atom always goes in the center with everyone else connecting to it. And we use uh, single bonds to start with to connect everything. The one exception is hydrogen. Hydrogen, a lot of times, is the least electronegative, but it never goes in the center. And that's because it can only have one bond going from it. So hydrogen should never be in the middle. You remember, electronegativity increases as you go up and over. So that means the least electronegative element is going to be the one farthest to the left and the farthest down. So in the case of phosphorus trichloride, that would be phosphorus. And then we connect the terminal atoms, so the other guys, with a single bond, Cl, Cl, and Cl. And go ahead and space things out, uh, up, down, left, right. So try not to cram things in. You know, an example of a bad way to draw this would be like that. Okay, that's going to end up messing you up down the road, and it's not going to help you out at all when it comes to Vesper structures. And also, don't necessarily jump to the conclusion that this is going to be a three-dimensional, like a peace sign, and draw it as phosphorus and chlorine, 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 like that. That'll end up getting crowded down the road as well. So just space them out like you would a plus sign. Next, we're going to take that skeleton structure from the previous slide. And we're going to complete the octets for all the terminum, terminal atoms except hydrogen. So there is no hydrogen in this one. But remember, hydrogen, the only thing you can have is one bond going from it, because all it needs is two valence electrons. So you never put lone pairs on chlorines, or on hydrogens. But on chlorines, you do. So this chlorine right here, let's look at this guy. It has two valence electrons right now to its name, the ones it's sharing with phosphorus. It needs six more to complete its octet. So that means we're going to put six dots around chlorine. So remember, we use lone pairs. Lone pairs, that means they're always found in twos. So we don't just draw six dots all the way around it. We put them in groups of two on different sides. So make sure you always leave them in pairs, and we can go ahead and do that for everybody. 
And there we go. We've now completed the octets on all the terminal atoms, and obviously not hydrogen. So now each of those chlorines has eight valence electrons to its name. Uh, let's do a real quick count. So we have eight electrons represented here, two, four, six, and eight, and then eight there, so that's 16, another eight there, so that's 24. Remember, we had 26 electrons at the beginning, so we don't have all of them represented yet. Let's go to the next step to see what happens with those last two. All right, and finally, we're going to add up the electrons that we have used and subtract them from the total. So that's what we did when we were talking about it last uh, slide. We started out with 26 electrons. Well, we have 24 out there right now, so that means we have two left. And we're going to put those on the central atom as lone pairs. So when we do that, then, we can see that now the octet is also complete for phosphorus. So there we go. This is the completed Lewis structure for phosphorus trichloride. But let's not get too comfy yet. So this step number four is important. Something that people are going to start jumping to and, and doing automatically is when they look at the structure, so when they just have the skeleton, just automatically put dots around everything. This one worked out nicely that everyone got a complete octet, and it looks just like this. Don't jump the gun, though, and just start assuming that you can draw these without doing any of the steps, without counting valence electrons. That is the number one mistake for drawing Lewis structures. Okay, follow these steps precisely. Even once you're done having to kind of read the steps, make sure that you do what you're supposed to do in the order you're supposed to do it. It could be sometimes that you have more than two electrons left over at the end. You could have four, in which case all four of them would go around here, and phosphorus would add six or uh, ten valence electrons. It happens, and you know it happens because you see it in your bank, because you have more than just two left over at the end. Also, it could be that you don't have enough, and you have to double or triple bond. So make sure you follow these steps always. All right, we're going to do another practice problem. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and warn you, there is a, a different thing at the end of this one. So this molecule will end up being uh, not as easy as the last one. But if you'd like, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can draw the Lewis structure for this one yourself. Just make sure you follow all those steps. Uh, if you get to the end and you don't quite know what to do, it's fine. Just resume the video and we can work through it. All right, I went ahead and uh, hopped ahead to step number four. Hopefully you got through those first couple steps and you laid out your skeleton with carbon in the middle and then the two oxygens on the outside. And then you completed the octet around the surrounding atoms. And so we've got eight valence electrons in oxygen, eight valence electrons in the other oxygen. So here's an example where people jump the gun. Uh, you might have gotten to the point where you had the skeleton, just went ahead and drew dots around everything. Don't do that, and here's why. So when we get to step number four, we're going to go ahead and count the total number of electrons that we started with and then subtract what we have out there so far. So we started with 16 valence electrons. That was six from each of the oxygens and then four from carbon. Uh, represented out there right now, we have uh, eight around this oxygen, two, four, six, eight, and then two, four, six, eight. So we have a grand total of 16 electrons represented out there already. That means we are at zero. So if you went ahead and just put dots around this carbon right there, one, two, three, four, completed its octets, clapped your hands and called it good, you were wrong because you didn't do this and you would have found out that, well, we've already got all 16 electrons out there. There isn't any more left over to put on carbon. Thus arises the problem because carbon does need those eight valence electrons. So how can it get it? Well, it means we've got to create another step. We've got to go to step number five. So if you get to this point, there's no more electrons left and someone still needs to meet their octet, step number five. So here we go. This is our carbon dioxide. The carbon in the middle, it's not happy yet. It only has two four valence electrons and it's got to have eight. What this means then is that the oxygens are just being too greedy. They've got to go ahead and share some more electrons. The two that they're sharing each right now, it's just not going to cut it. And so we're going to have to take one lone pair off oxygen and stick it in the middle. And then we'll take a lone pair off the other oxygen and stick it in the middle as well. What this is going to create for us then is carbon double bonded to oxygen. And that oxygen only has two lone pairs left because it gave up one to the middle. And then the other oxygen, same thing. It's sharing one of those three lone pairs that it had before, and now it has two lone pairs. And so there we go. If we go ahead and count these valence electrons, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, we have met the 16 mark, 
and everyone has their valence electrons, their octet. So this is a correctly drawn Lewis structure following the rules. So make sure you're careful and follow those steps. All right, multiple bonds, they're not always just double bonds. Sometimes you'll wind up with triple bonds. So you see this example here in hydrogen cyanide, cyanate, uh, uh, carbon bonded to nitrogen. They have to share three lone pairs or three sets of valence electrons. And so that represents six electrons, each one of those lines being two. Carbon could not have formed one of these double bonds with hydrogen because, remember, hydrogen can only have one uh, covalent bond. That's it. It doesn't need to hold any more than two electrons, so it's happy like that. You're never going to have quadruple bonds, so it's always going to be single, double, or triple. And then last thing are polyatomic ions. So when you're drawing Lewis structures, polyatomic ions, which you can do because they are covalently bonded, they just have a charge. We have to represent that charge by drawing brackets around the molecule and then putting the charge of the molecule on the outside, so if it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, because there's not a particular molecule or a particular atom in this molecule that has the negative charge, it's the entire molecule that's a negative, and so we do the brackets with a negative on the outside, meaning, hey, this whole thing is negative. Also, that negative means that there's an extra electron, and so that means when you're adding up the total for your bank, you would add an extra electron to it. If it is, you know, minus 3, so phosphate, that means you would add 3 to the uh, bank. You know, if it's minus 2, same thing. And if it's positive, like ammonium, that means it's missing an electron, so you would actually subtract an electron from the bank. And then other net rules are the same. Do, though, please, please do, though, make sure that you draw the brackets around there. It could be that they try and trick you by having you do a polyatomic ion, which they more than likely will, and they're going to give you a point for putting that charge on the outside with the brackets just to make sure that you know how to do it. So always, always do that step right there. It's a guaranteed point giver.